Well, it was never going to be an easy decision this summer, was it? We're back very early in the head coach during the summer transfer window. We are at Maidenhead at the moment, but we've got our first job offer. There's also some interesting interviews elsewhere. So where are we going to end up? There's only one way to find out. Hello and welcome to what I figure will be a big decision time in this year's head coach with me, Daniel. It's part 42 today and we have got some potential job offers, interviews and just decisions to make across the board. Are we still going to be at Maidenhead at the start of season 6? Will we lead them into the National League? Or have we got another job offer on the way? Well, the answer to that is coming pretty quick because there is one job offer, not the one I was waiting for. But if you're looking forward to finding out who's interested and where we might be off to, then please do put a thumbs up on the video. But I'm not going to waste your time here. Let's go and get over to the staffing screen, over to the job centre and see what on earth has been going on this summer. Because as you can see, we have got three jobs that we've applied for. Two of them we are the favourites for. But there is some other interest as well because Eastleigh, who were in the National League, an established side, a professional side, offered us an interview almost immediately after the season. They didn't offer us the job, but we got the opportunity, which I was grateful for. However, since applying for the two relegated clubs from League Two, we have had two more job interviews. Now, this is very important because you might think, well, we're leaving a club that's got momentum and going up to the National League for a club perhaps that is on the way down and is on the decline. But there's a big moment for us. Five years in, we have yet to manage a professional club. Both of these sides will be professional. Bromley actually finished above Port Vale in the league last season. I personally, maybe because of history, are just going for Port Vale as the more established club. But let's have a look at how both of them stand at the moment. Because Bromley, they finished second bottom of League 2. The league table, they were separated by one point. So there's not a huge amount in it. But if we go and have a look at the squad they've got, there's some very good players in there. A lot of them, though, out of contract this year. And that's something we've got to bear in mind, too. Because don't forget, this is a director of football challenge. No saying transfer staffing or contracts. We've got to make sure that the squad there is good. The one thing I do like is that, bar perhaps Seb Raven here, they've not gone mad in terms of wages. They've only got a few players on over a grand a week. I would imagine most of them in a couple of weeks, yep will lose 25% for their relegation wage drop. So they look like a club that might not collapse financially. We'll see, of course, if that's the case. What we've got, though, on the other side of that is a Port Vale side who are very established. They've also got a captain who we know very well from Hemel in FM22. That man is Will Swan. He's got a contract for next year and he's still very good. But the problem with these guys, perhaps, is that only a couple of the senior players have got contracts for next year. So we'd be a lot more reliant on a director of football to get players in. And as you can see from their staffing screen, they haven't got one yet. It really is a bit of a balance between a club with great facilities, a club that's really established, a club that's looking for a new stadium that's smaller. Well, that might put me off. And a club who perhaps is a little bit smaller traditionally, but is in a good area of the country to get players in on loan for director of footballs. And is a club that is improving and off the pitch, bar the stadium is not too bad. There's no doubt the potential's bigger at Port Vale. There's no doubt the easier job immediately is Bromley. And the first job offer that has come in is that of Bromley. They're offering us a very slight pay rise. They're offering us a transfer budget and wage budget that is comparable. And they're only asking us to reach the playoffs, not automatically go back up. So that looks okay on the face of it. I'm looking at the squad. I think there's some good players about but Port Vale is very tempting for me. So we're going to skip ahead a week. We're going to ask to delay this once and see if we get the extra seven days. They've agreed. So will we get an offer from Port Vale as well? I almost hope they reject us so a decision is made for us because two professional clubs, two very different circumstances, and I fear I might choose the wrong one. But let's go and see if we get another job offer. If not, we'll be off to Bromley in seven days time. Well, we're back just two days later with a job offer from Port Vale as well. But there are some big alarm bells ringing. First of all, no better wage despite the bigger club. Wage budget is lower. No transfer budget. Expectation is to attempt to avoid relegation from the National League. 
They're trying to build a stadium. The club's got financial damage that needs to be repaired. I have no doubt that despite the fact they're a slightly more established EFL club on paper, that this is going to be a disaster. I'm thinking we've got to go for Bromley. They're both professional moves. In reality, I probably would consider Maidenhead too because although they're still semi-pro, there's potential there. There's one good player who's already come in and a few of you mentioned it in the comments. It's the first really good director of football we've had. But we've got to take the move to professional football. I'm not going to take Port Vale. I'm going to delay it just in case there's problems with the contract with Bromley. But I think we've got to go for the club that's on a sound financial footing, has got better players at the club and has actually got a squad tied down for next year. Because we saw our first season at Maidenhead where we started with eight professionals at the start of the season. We can't be doing that again. So let's get ahead to Saturday the 19th. My decision is made. We will be joining Bromley back in a minute for the job offer. We may well have an absolutely massive curveball. Are we prepared to address speculation linking us with the vacant crew job? Crew Alexandra, let's go and have a look at them. They won League 2. They're going up to League 1. They've got a famed youth academy. They're a very good football club. They've got Will Andy Appan, who was a star for us last year at Dover. If we can get a job in League 1, I don't think we can turn it down. I would absolutely love to consider that job. The problem is the Bromley one's coming in two days and it might cost us another job. So we're going to go and apply for it. We're going to go and hope to get an interview. We might have to ask Bromley for one more delay. Fingers crossed, this could be a very pleasant surprise. What on earth do we do? Because our director of football here is still trying to sign quality players. He's bought one or two in already. That would be another to prepare us for the National League. The Maidenhead board, though, are disappointed with us. Is a hefty compensation fee to get us, which maybe then makes us rethink this because Bromley are offering us a good job. National League playoffs, a good team, a chance to get promotion. But there's a law of potentially going two divisions higher. I didn't even apply for it because I thought we wouldn't have a chance and we're not the favourite. But if we could get a job in League One, it would change the save. I'm going to do it. Let's press delay. Bromley have. Agree to the delay. Crew Alexandra, if you want me, you've got seven days to give me an interview and an offer. Let's skip ahead. The saga is over. A week later, Crew's fans were flattered by the interest we'd shown, but nothing else came of it. So Bromley is the club we're going to be taking on. A chance to go to a professional team for the first time, a slight wage increase which we'll try and negotiate up, and realistic expectations. The Maidenhead board, incidentally, had just increased theirs to actually avoid in relegation rather than attempting it. So let's go and start the negotiations here. Can we get ourselves an extra 50 quid along the way? 725 is taken. I probably should have gone a bit higher. But we are moving to our fourth club of the save. And for the first time, it's a professional one. Back in a moment for our first day at the club, where we'll have a look at all the staff and players we're going to be working with. Let's get cracking. And here it is. We are now in charge of the Ravens Bromley, a side who have just come down to the National League, but have a very good team, expected to be up near the top. And is it going to be another club where we use a new formation? There's only one way to find out. We're going to go and get through to our first day at the club. I would imagine we're going to have some unhappy players to deal with. And as we saw, although it was nowhere near as bad as Port Vale, there are still a few who are going out of contract. So there is going to be a little bit of work for a director of football to do. There is going to have to be a new one come into the club. But let's see who we've got here already. Alan Dunn, assistant manager, good player back in his day. Actually, I think a smaller ground than the one that we've got on Maidenhead. One and a half star reputation, though. Media prediction of second. This squad on paper seems to be pretty good. A transfer and wage budget that is very competitive, far dwarfs anything we've had at any other club. Players on loan are out in a few days' time, so they don't make any difference here. But we've also got a very good team. So let's go and get through to our first day at the club. National League playoffs expected. The fans want automatic promotion. That might be a bit trickier. Let's go and have a look at the supporter profile. 12% hardcore fans, and it is a side that have got expectations. So maybe that's something we're going to have to take into account, especially considering they want us to play a different style of football. Defensively solid, counter-attacking. Does that match up with what the board want? I'm not so sure. We've got to reach the playoffs, semi-final of the FA Trophy, and fourth qualifying round of the FA Cup. How do they expect less in the FA Cup than Maidenhead did? That's absolutely baffling. 
through the social feed. We are going to reject that, but we will, of course, unfollow Maidenhead. But there's only one thing we want to do here. Meet the staff and players. Six of them want to leave. They're all very well rated. We'll get to them in a minute. But let's start with the staff that are here before we get to the players. And the first thing that strikes me here is that Bromley have actually got a pretty well staffed coaching team. Now, I've got to try and just reserve judgment a little bit because it's four days until a lot of contracts may expire. But are the staff going to be included in that? Let's go and have a look. No. Every staff member there has got a contract for next year. So let's start with our assistant, which is Alan Dunn. Looks like we're going to need to get the director of football in via the chairman who's going to recruit them, of course. And then that new director of football will be getting the likes of a head of youth development and a new scouting team, which is very much empty at the moment. But let's have a look at Alan Dunn. He is pretty good, actually. Maybe his management isn't the best, but as an assistant and as a help on the training ground and working with young players, he's an absolute gem. Been here for a long time, since 2017 in various capacities. I've got no problem with him being my number two. Next down is a goalkeeping coach in Brannon Daly. He's all right. He's nothing special, but he'll do the job for next year. And he's young as well at 30, so may well improve. Fitness coach is John Rayner. He is not good at all. Maybe not one that we're looking to keep longer term, but that's not going to be up to us, of course. And then the two senior general coaches are Steve Aris, who is pretty run of the mill, and Lucas Gatti, who very similar, but Argentinians. But it's been here a few years as well, so we've got to keep the faith with them. They've served these players for a long time and taken them out of this league before. But they are people we can obviously trust. Let's get down to the physios. Are they any good? Head physio Torga is okay. Physio Wickenden is okay. And then the Chief Scout, the only part of the recruitment team at the minute, is Alex Hay. He is on good money, and he's not bad, to be fair. Not good at negotiating, so we'll hope the director of football's better. But 9 for ability, 11 for judging potential. You couldn't have asked for much more at this level. Andy Hoskins is the under-21 manager. He's not too bad, but not perfect. And then the under-18s manager actually looks a bit of a gem at the age of 34. So we'll keep an eye on him and his development because he's someone who I'd really like to see promoted. But again, we don't have a say in staffing or in players. So we're not going to get to choose who we work with. The chairperson will pick a director of football. They will recruit the rest of the staff. And in the meantime, let's see what players we've got to work with. Because if we go via the development centre, are there any good players in the youth teams? Looks like there's a few in fairness, two-star ability. So just going to go and promote them straight away. We've got a young goalkeeper who can be a backup if need be. We'll come back to that if we need. And then in the 18s, no, there's no two-star abilities there. And no huge, enormous potential, but a few players predicted to be pretty good. If we go through to the senior squad, though, does leave us with a pretty big side. A couple of players whose loan deals are ending soon, and a few players who are obviously out of contract in four days' time. But overall, there is a big core of a squad side down here. If we go from there to the bottom... There's going to be some very decent players about. Let's get them in positional and reports order. See what they're rated by the assistant, who we've seen isn't the worst judge in the world. Let's get them up in report order and let's see who's going to be here next season. Because the number one goalkeeper is James Hilson. Three star ability, three and a half potential. Apparently an emergency backup, but he's the best keeper at the club. Has been first choice for multiple seasons and is a very good goalkeeper. He's a traditional keeper. He's not one of those that rushes out and plays much with his feet. But he's a good player. He's a solid shot stopper. Very happy with him as number one. His backup is 23-year-old Harrison Bond at two-star ability. A little bit light in the air and only 5 foot 10. That's a slight concern. So we might have a look at the youth keeper by comparison. But again, the first choice keeper is clear. is set in stone. And James Hilson, he's only 5 foot 10 as well. What is it with the short goalkeepers here? Either way, he's decent enough, so we're going to stick with him. Into defence, we've got what looks to be a very young side. Only Nick Freeman is over the age of 30 and Omar Sawunmi. But one of those is out of contract and one is due to be in four days' time. So we'll gloss over quickly the ones that are leaving. Omar Sawunmi is a good centre-half. He's there in real life and he stayed there throughout. But it looks like at 31, he'll be moving on. Sean Grehan is the next defender. Right back and centre half at 23 years of age. Balanced personality. Very good. I mean, he's rock solid. He's not the best going forward. But at the back, he's six foot three. He can play on the right pretty comfortably as a sort of defensive fullback. 
I think we've got a good player there. And still, not got a big squad duty, not expected to play lots of games. It does seem to be the pattern here. Lots of players expected to play a little bit of football, and we're just going to see who the breakthrough stars are. So pretty happy with him. Another one that's two and a half star ability is Will Squires. He's got a two-year deal, and this time can play left back and centre half. Maybe not quite so good. Again, six foot four, very physically imposing, but he has got a few little weaknesses. His personality is great, so hopefully he will reach that potential. But the position in the heading is not quite there. Either way, though, a solid enough backup. And the best rated defender, three and a half star ability, Nico Paulwell. He is a 20 year old Jamaican. He's got massive potential. He's superb. Look at him. Six foot two. He's actually a natural centre half as well. He's not the best in the air, but his positioning is exquisite. He's left footed. He's got a great personality. Good on the ball if we want to play out from the back with this team. And physically, he's good as well. I mean, you can't ask for much more. That is a good National League centre half. And if he improves that tackling and heading by one, you've got a gem of a player on your hands. Next up, two star ability, Ollie Morris. Looks like a bit more of a youngster in the squad. Oh, he's all right, though. He's very short and a little bit slow, but mentally he's good and he's a good in the tackle. I mean, as a number two fullback, I've got no problem with him. Will we have the same with Mike Jones, who is similar? Two star ability, 18 years of age. Yeah, look at the personality. I am willed, left footed, natural on that side. And again, maybe not the quickest, but a very good young defender. This is a very decent young team. So I think we've got quite a lot to be excited about. The returning loan player is George Thomas. He is two and a half star ability, four star potential, can play anywhere along the back four and is natural at left back. And again, the personalities are really good. With regular football, a lot of these will improve. I'm so pleased with them. He's six foot one. He's physically imposing. He could play in the middle if we really needed him to. I've got no problem about him at all. George Thomas, glad to have you coming back. On the right hand side is Kieran Coates. He is 25 years of age, natural right back, good going forward, so could play further forward too, and very good physically. Maybe a little limited technically, but a good overall player and someone who will be solid yet again in the National League. I think that's what we're perhaps seeing with this side. There's no big standout superstars other than Paulwell so far, but we're seeing a lot of good players, players that can play virtually anywhere. I did notice though that Coates is out of contract, so he's one that might be off in a few days. As will Jack Clay, who is basically the top earner at the club. He is on 1.4 grand a week and he's not that good. So I'm not disappointed to see him go at all. Kyle John is the next one here for a season. He is a right back, left back and right midfielder. Dry managed him at Salford in FM20. Good defensively, good physically and mentally he's determined. I mean, he's a good fullback. This is a really pleasant surprise so far. Seb Raven is one who wants to leave, but he has got a contract for two years. Three and a half star left back, four star potential. He's superb. So you've got him and Paulwell as the left half of the defence. You ain't going to be losing many games with that team. What a player he is. If we can keep him, if the director of football can keep these star players, we are going to have a super side. What a player. What a fullback. And I am getting very excited as we go down this list. Thomas Hill is the next one. Three and a half ability again. He's very versatile. Can play right back, holding mid, centre mid, right wing, right wing back and left wing as well. He's a proper all-rounder. Again, the personality superb. We are not going to have many problems if we go a goal down because this side has got a lot of metal about it. Good physically, natural fitness is great. He looks like a proper box-to-box -box midfielder. Ironically, not one of the things he's rated best in. I guess perhaps because of the technical attributes and he's not the best defensively. But he's an okay passer. He's okay finishing and dribbling. And everything else is just excellent. Great determination. Great physically. He is a super, super player. Max Bardell is about to leave the club. He is a right back who's not great again. The ones that are going give me faith in the recruitment team that's here already and the coaches because it's the worst players that are leaving the club. Adam Lovett at 28. I wouldn't have minded to keep him because he's an okay player, but he's not a standout, certainly in star ability to what we've got to come after it. Because the next name I recognise is Harvey Griffiths. He's a former City youngster, isn't he? I can't remember what stream save it was, but we ended up with him somewhere. He is very good mentally again. 
Not the best physically, but he can just sit in that deep line playmaker role and he's got bundles of technical ability. Maybe the one thing that has been missing so far is we've not got players who are great on the ball. He likes to dictate the tempo, can get the ball off the defence and maybe he can find a solution. So we're definitely looking at a tactic with a hole in midfielder because he is standout and he's not got the legs to play further forward. But in a midfield three in that holding role, Harvey Griffiths is going to be an absolute star. Below him is another midfielder rated very well. Marcus Sablia is 24 years of age. He's three and a half ability. He is superb. Look at the quality of the midfielders here. Mentally, again, solid. Great decision making. Physically superb. He's six foot five. His jumping reach is impeccable. This is a player who's going to score goals from set pieces and will be a threat from open play. And with the two centre mids we've seen there, we've got one who's much better going forward. And you could argue that Sablia is maybe a little bit better going backwards. So two box to boxes that look very good. Likes to get forward this lad, doesn't dive into challenges. He's an absolute dream for the National League in midfield. Next up is Paul McIntyre at 19. Doesn't look quite as good, but at the moment we do just need some backups in there. Two and a half star ability, four and a half potential. Just solid, really decent backup. A little bit better on the ball than the others that we've seen so far, but not as physically imposing, not as mentally strong, but a good player. Likes to shoot from distance, good on the ball. The possibilities are pretty endless here. Next up is Alex Gibson Hammond. He is a versatile midfielder. Right wing, oh, he's out of contract at the end of the year. On big money, won't be staying on. It's a good player, would have been good to have about, but not superb, so no massive loss. Nick Freeman is 31. He's on pay-as-you-play terms at the minute. Not sure he's wanted by anyone. I do remember this guy. He's a good player. Again, would work in that box-to-box -box midfield role. Again, would work as a right winger. He's just really solid. Good mentally, good physically. And even at 31, he's not declining too much at all. On to the more attacking players. We've got two youngsters and two very good ones by the looks of it. Ross McDonald is our left midfielder. Two-star ability, three-star potential. He's okay. Physically, he's good. The key attributes are all right. Not the best technique, not the best off the ball. I wouldn't like him to be more than a backup, and I'd be happy if he was loaned out. Although, we've not really got any wingers here, have we? With the lad that's leaving Gibson Hammond, with him, it's only really Freeman. So, I'm wondering if we look at similar tactics to what we had with Woking in our live stream saves. A back three wing backs, three centre mids, and then two strikers. That's going to depend on the quality of these two. Andy Riley is a 19-year-old. He's versatile again. He's three-star ability. And he's a natural striker. Big, big potential. Maybe a bit more of a deep line forward. He's great on the ball. And he'd be a good number 10 as well, in fairness. But we've got to try and find a tactic that works. And that might mean he's six foot one. He's good enough in the air. It might mean we have to play him up front. But it's not a tactic I often get to use, is it? A deep line forward, a false nine. I don't get to show those very often. So it would be good to have Andy Riley in. He's playing youth international football. He's developing all the time. He's only scored four in 77. That's something we're going to have to work on. That means that our hopes are on either getting another lone player like this guy who's just about to be leaving the club. Oh, he would be a joy to have. But the main one that's left here, four-star ability Nicky Colkett. Is he a winger? Is he a striker? Or is he something else? Let's have a look at him. He's a centre forward. He is absolutely brilliant. Left-footed striker. Likes to run in behind. He's quick. He's an okay finisher. He's good on the ball as well. He's got everything. Looks like a Lee Trundle type there. Nicky Colkett. That is a way to finish. His scoring record's much better. He is an absolute superstar. It looks like the Bromley Youth Academy is churning out superstars. Masai Cheek is his backup. He's not particularly good. But again... Plenty of potential to go and a lot of left-footed attackers. So I'm looking at this at the moment, thinking back three wing-backs, holding mid, two centre mids, two strikers. Let me know if you agree or disagree. So I've got to say, I'm probably more excited than when I started here because although we're going to be in the same league as Maidenhead next year, we are on a professional contract, we are at a professional club and we are at a team expected to be right up the top. We're expected second place behind Woking, our live stream team. Maidenhead, four favourites to go down, are one of the best of the promoted clubs. It's going to be a much tougher season for them than on paper it will be for us.
So if you're looking forward to seeing how we get on as we will return next time out for our first game in charge of Bromley, we should have a director of football and full staffing in place by then and Southend away will be the destination. If you're looking forward to it and you did enjoy this one, a first move to a professional job, then please do put a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below and turn that notification bell on for daily FM23 content and let me know how you think we'll get on in charge of Bromley in the National League.